Hey everyone and welcome to the channel. So today we get to take a look at the all new 2024 BMW X5. This is the XDrive 40i. Huge shout out to Hendrick BMW Northlake for providing this SUV for me today. Check out their website, that link is down in the description. So this X5 is finished off in Davit Gray Metallic. They have a starting MSRP right around $67,000. This model is closer to 84,000 with all the options to make this well equipped. So let's start off with what powers this X5. Underneath the hood, this has the three liter inline six cylinder turbocharged engine. It's also paired with an electric motor system. It's paired to the eight speed automatic transmission as well and pumps out 340 horsepower, 398 pound feet of torque. That power sent through the X-Drive all wheel drive system propelling this 5,000 pound SUV from zero to 60 in four and a half seconds up to its top speed of 130 miles an hour. It also has a fuel capacity of 21.9 gallons. You'll expect to see around 23 miles per gallon in the city, 27 out on the highway. This also has a wheelbase of 117.1 inches. Its overall length is 194.3. It has a width of 78.9, a height of 69 and a half, and its ground clearance measures in at 8.7 inches. As we move on to the exterior styling now for the all new X5, let's start off with some of the subtle changes compared to the previous model. So with the LED headlights, DRLs, and turn signals, nothing too distinctive. However, the turn signals have a different design to them and a different animation when they light up. So it's a very subtle change to see. Still retains the kidney grill. This model has the M Sport and the M Sport Pro package. So it does give it the shadow line package. The surround for this grill is finished off in matte black. It has the forward facing camera along with all of the active grill shutters. So those will open to provide even more cooling to that engine. There's more gloss black in the lower section. It surrounds all the parking sensors, the forward facing sensor for the adaptive cruise, as well as showing all of these massive air inlets to provide even more cooling. Now another subtle change is the air inlets on both sides of the bumper. On the previous model, they were a little bit more squared on these, on these ones here, you can see they're more in that vertical position, but they are functional too. So that provides even more cooling. And then there are uh, plenty of lines running down the hood to finish it off nicely and give it a great look. Now, as we work our way to the side, this has the optional 22 inch wheels. I get a lot of comments about how they ride on the road. Very smooth in my opinion. I've been able to drive a few with this size, but they have a great look. Multi-spoke design to them, finished off in gloss black. And then this has the M Sport brake calipers, which are finished off in blue. There's also a trim piece just behind that tire. It is not functional. However, it would be nice since that trim piece in the front is functional for airflow to exit. But there is a functional piece just up underneath that. So you can see underneath the side skirt there for airflow to go through, but the upper uh, trim piece there is just not functional. Now for these power folding side mirrors, they have the two-tone design with the camera system, integrated turn signal, you will notice everything else is blacked out. This even has a full panoramic sunroof too. And then some nice lines running down the side. Nothing has changed for the side profile, but I love all of the contoured lines, the fender arches, and then that lower side skirt there just gives it a really good design for this model. Now, as we finish up in the rear, this has a body colored spoiler, third brake light, wiper blade is in the lower section. For these LED taillights, they have the same design as up front. A Little bit different of an animation, but it is still very cool to see that subtle touch. This has a backup camera, all the sensors. There's some more gray trim in that lower section to separate the diffuser. This can also tow right around 6,600 pounds. So not only do you get a sort, a sort of a performance oriented SUV with this model, you also get a powerhouse for towing. And this even has remote start. So you can use that as needed just by triple tapping that lock button on the key fob. And you can use the key fob to open up the power lift gate, or you can use the electronic button to the left of that backup camera. Now for the X5, it has the split style for this power lift gate. So you'll see the upper one, of course, go up. From there, we can electronically lower basically the tailgate portion. So you can use this to tailgate, to sit on, but it also provides a barrier between the back of the bumper and your load height. So when you're putting in items, you don't have to worry about hitting that lower section because it protrudes outwards. But now that we are in the cargo space, plenty of area here for any items that you'd like to place. There's also some hooks, tie down hooks. There's a 12 volt too. 
and you even have space up underneath the floor. So this entire section opens up, revealing the spare tire. You could use this for a little bit more storage. You can place the cover in the back too. So if you are not using that, it can easily be placed out of the way, or you can have it installed like it currently is. And you can even fold down these back seats. So that provides you with a lot more interior space, making this a great daily driver. Now for the lift gate, you can close the lower one individually or up top if you push on one of these two buttons. So we have lock and just close, then both of them will close with the push of that one button. So it is nice that you have that option. Now, as we work our way to the back seats, we have the beautiful interior to comment this Brooklyn gray. You will notice leather. There's also the adjustable sunshade so that way you can use that as needed. Brushed aluminum for that release handle. This has the ambient lighting, even the Harman Kardon sound system. There's wood trim and then plenty of storage in the lower section of that door. So it has a lot of nice materials. And then you will notice that leather makes its way to these seats, which have a great design running down them. The M badge is also down on the door sill, which is an illuminating badge. And at five foot 10, I can hop into the back. It's not all that high of an SUV, so it's very easy to get into. There's storage pockets behind both front seats, air vents, all the climate adjustments. These are even heated rear seats too, which is nice to see. A Little bit of storage underneath that where you could place your phone. And then there's a few auxiliaries at the lower section there where you can charge electronics. You can also charge electronics from the back of both front seats. So as you can tell, there's a, an auxiliary there and then you have an area where you can attach a tablet or a bracket in order to place a tablet. So that way you can watch whatever you'd like to be very comfortable in these back seats. I have plenty of room with the front seat set at my height. And then at five foot 10, I have around two or three inches above my head. Now these seats do not recline, but they do have a little bit more of a, a laid back position to them. So it's super comfortable to be back here. And we have plenty of light with that moon roof currently open. Now in the middle, you will notice that there's the armrest underneath a little bit of storage if you need to utilize that. And then there are two cup holders. You can use those as needed. And then you can also fold down the middle section or the middle seat. If you need a little bit more versatility, maybe you want a higher armrest or you have some longer items and you have a passenger on both sides. Pillar in the back, not all that bulky with the massive windows on each side. So it's super easy to see around. You'll notice too, there's another air vent on the pillar and then the dome lights are also up top. Those are by the grab handle. Now working our way to the front seats, the door panels finish off just like the rear. However, there is the addition of all the window adjustments, side mirror adjustments, memory seating adjustments too. There's also the L2 button. You can use that to move the front passenger seat just by pushing on that. And then we have everything else for the lower section, just like in the rear. And then the same design for these seats. However, a little bit more bolstering support to them. There's an adjustment for the front section and then all of the automatic adjustments are down on the side. And it's just as easy to hop into these front seats where we can take a look at the beautiful solid leather M Sport steering wheel. You will see on this left side, there's all the cruise control settings on the right side, volume and tuning for the radio, as well as Bluetooth voice commands and a shortcut into some of your favorites. There's also brushed aluminum trim accents. It covers the steering wheel mounted paddle shifters. But let's fire up the all new X5 with my foot on the brake. That crystal button is located down below. We can bring this to life. And looking at the all new infotainment and gauge cluster setup, this is about a 33 inch screen when you add everything together. I think it's a really cool new design for this model. But the current setup that you can see for the gauge cluster, on the left side there's the miles per hour, right side is the tack. There is some fixed information running across the bottom like your fuel level along with the speed limit sign, engine temperature, outside temperature. But if I use that button on the right side of the steering wheel, we can actually go through some more content right in the middle of this display. So you can look at the adaptive cruise. There's also the augmented reality, which is a pretty cool system to see. There's also some more content that you can monitor like the compass. You can pull up the map too. So you can have that in full screen right in the middle. And then this next one here is for your, for your G-Force meter. You can pull up the music as well. And then that is it for the content that you can go through. Now, if I scroll over to the layout, there are a few different settings that you can see. 
Changing it to this one, now you can see the power output from that electric system. And then we have more of a calm screen setting where everything is minimized over on that left side, but you can still go through the rest of this content now in a little bit larger of a screen. So if you wanna see this in a bigger view, just simply put it to this calm screen here where now you can see just how large some of that information is. And then if you wanna go back and pull some of that other info up in a full screen view, you have the option to do that. Now the last setting is for the head up display. So currently this is the standard view. There's also the directional view to pull up the compass. And then the last one is the sport view. So you can pull up the tack to be able to monitor that as needed. There's also a reduced view too. So not a whole lot of settings, but it's nice that you have the option to at least go through some of those and get them dialed in the way that you would like to. Now on the left side of the steering wheel, you will see the headlight adjustments to be able to turn those on and off. There's a little bit of storage, so you can place some items down below. And then as we work our way to the infotainment system now, super easy system to go through. This is the home screen right now, where you can see some of these icons, just depending on what you need to go into. You can even add some icons if needed. So just by going to that last page there, super simple to see that. On this left side, if I push on those four squares, now we have a lot more icons to go through. You can go into your displays, your owner's manual, there's the interior lighting, all the driving settings too. So if I click onto this and go in here, you can go through some of this info. You can go into your chassis along with the uh, drivetrain. And then if we go back to this left side, you will see shortcuts to navigation, pulling that up to go through all that info, your music and phone. And that is pretty much all that you get. If we go into all apps now, you can go through your seats, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. So it gives you an array of icons to easily be able to go through. And now since the climate adjustments are not physical buttons, they have been fixed the entire time I've been going through this info. So you can easily get to your temperature. Clicking on the menu now, we can go into the heated steering wheel, heated and ventilated seats, temperature adjustments, and then all the passenger controls too. So while they are on the screen, I do like that it's fixed in the lower section, so you don't have to guess or hunt for where they are. You can quickly get to them, which is great to have. Now underneath that, there's more of that wood trim. You'll notice too that there's the arrows there leading all the way to the X5 badge. All of it is an illuminating area within this trim piece, which is super cool to see. In the middle, there are two air vents, more of that brush trim. And then underneath that, power and volume for the radio, as well as tuning, there's defrosters and the hazards. And then you will notice more of the wood trim surrounding everything down below. If I open up this pad, there is a wireless charging area on this left side, storage on the right side, two cup holders with some auxiliaries. And then on this right side, all of these are for the infotainment system. So it is a touchscreen system or you can simply just use all of these shortcuts to get to any of the info that you would like to access. So it's nice, super easy to go through with the rotary dial, which is also finished off in crystal, as well as the new gear shifter. So that is finished in crystal too. Just by pushing this forwards, that engages reverse, where we have the backup camera along with the top-down view. There's also uh, some shortcuts here to be able to get into some of those uh, viewpoints there. You can go to the assisted view. We have the widescreen angle. If I go back into the 3D view, you can use the gesture control, or you can simply push on these shortcuts here and clearly see what's around the entire vehicle. There's also another top-down view that you can use. And then if I put this into drive, now we have the forward-facing camera with the same angles for some of those, like the full screen there. So it definitely gives you a lot of visibility. Now, if I go into a drive a second time, that pops it over to the sport mode. So that allows you to use these paddle shifters and then park is located just behind that. Now on the left side, there's traction control along with the parking sensors and the different driving modes. So if I push on sport mode, you will see that change. There's a few different modes in sport. There's comfort. The last one is eco and you have a few different ones to go into that. So just depending on how you're driving for the day, there's a downhill assist control, the auto hold, along with the electronic parking brake. And then for the center armrest, it has the split style to it. So as we open that up, there is plenty of space along with an auxiliary to place any items that you would like to. Hopefully you can see now all of the red for that illuminating badge. Very cool to see that. Plenty of storage in the glove box too. And then we'll take another look at visibility from the driver's seat. It is super open feeling. So there's really no blind spots in either direction, which is of course great for the size of this. 
Up top, there's a call button along with the dome lights and the sunroof adjustment is right in the middle. As we set off now behind the wheel for the 2024 BMW X5, as I stated earlier, this model has an MSRP in the mid $80,000 range. This has a lot of options on it to where I would say it is well equipped. I feel like it's not really missing anything. So it has a good amount of options to it. It's a lot of expensive options, but I think it's everything that you would want to make this a great daily driving type of SUV. Not to say if you don't get some of these options, it would be any less, but I think it's, it's well equipped for the price too. It's really not all that bad for what you are getting. Now, this model here, the X-Drive 40i, is kind of more on the middle lineup for the BMW X5. So it's not performance oriented like the next model, but it's not a base model either. It has some good options to it and uh, plenty of power, I would say. So if we put it into a sport mode, we'll go down to second gear. We got the paddles, Sport Plus, here we go. I mean, just like that, we are up to speed and the paddles are so impressive. They are super responsive. This it has a performance vibe to it without having a crazy amount of horsepower. So if you're not interested in that, this is a good blend to have. And I love how this drives for not being the most performance oriented model. Taking that turn for an SUV it is super nice and composed. Now, one other point that I wanna mention or touch base on briefly is the 22 inch wheels that are on this model. I've had comments about running 22s on some of the other BMW models because it is a common wheel size that they use on various BMW models. And honestly, I have no complaints with it. Now I've put a few miles on various BMWs, so I don't have a lot of seat time necessarily behind this one, but when you add it all up, I have a lot of seat time behind different models and the 22 inch wheels. I don't see a problem with them, maybe replacing them. Tires might be a little bit more expensive because it is more of a specialty wheel size. But if you want the 22s, I don't have any complaints with them. I can feel some bumps here and there, but it's not something that would deter me from buying them. So with that out of the way, the X5 is such a cool SUV in my opinion. This is something that I would look to purchase in the next couple of years as well. So this is on my radar just because I love it. Every time I get to drive one, I love everything about them as far as just being a great daily driver, what it can tow as well, because I would be selling, for me, I would be selling a pickup truck, so I need something that can still tow. This is a perfect blend between the practicality of an SUV and being able to tow like a truck would. And from second gear, here we go. Hopefully you could hear how smooth those shifts were and how quick they are too. It's impressive. For a vehicle like this, I would hope the paddles would be used a lot more than just being there because it does have a fun vibe to it. Even though it's not loud, it's not the quickest X5 available. It certainly is still just as fun to drive. And then once we're up to speed, we can go back into drive, put it into the comfort setting. The lateral supports on the seat will also relax a little bit. So sport mode makes them a little bit tighter, which is impressive to see. But as we're behind the wheel now for this $85,000 BMW X5, I really don't have any complaints with this model. I'm not trying to be biased towards BMW. I don't own one yet, but I love everything about this vehicle. I can't really pick apart anything from the numerous miles that I've put between all of the X5s that I've been able to drive. I really don't see, maybe the only complaint that I would have is that the rear tailgate doesn't open with the lift gate. I think that'd be a cool setting you could go into if you want both of them to open at the same time. I recently reviewed the all new Range Rover and when you did that with the key fob, both of them opened up, which was nice because if you have your hands full of items, you just hit the key fob, they both open up, you can load everything in one set or one step. So I think it would be cool. That's probably my only gripe with this, which isn't a huge deal. And turning radius is also very, very good. So we did that with ease, but other than that, Super comfortable, 
very spacious, normal mode too. Don't even have to think about it, we're up to speed. But I think that's gonna wrap it up for this all new 2024 BMW X5. Once again, a huge shout out to Hendrick BMW Northlake for providing this SUV for me today. Check out their website, that link is down below. Give the video a huge thumbs up. Smash that subscribe button so you don't miss out on our daily uploads. I will see you all in the next video. Thank you.